by each other. All right, let's go, man. You know what it is. Welcome to the blackout. Check one, two, one, two. I go by the name of the O to the D to the M. One dope Mexican. And of course, we got my homeboy, Money Moons, on the switcher today, behind over there working things. He ain't got a camera on him, but what up? He got a mic, bro. <laughs> what up, what up? We over here hitting switches. Welcome. This is the uh, birth of Lighter Shader Brown. Um, this is uh, episode four, I believe. You've already witnessed DJ Fabe Love, Jammin' James, Cliff Ritchie. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep it going. The saga, the Lighter Shader Brown story, the beginning, the birth, right? And I'm, I mean, I'm having this pleasure uh, to sit down with some of my brothers from back in the day and sisters as well. And today we have a special guest. Um, before we get started, as every other platform tells you to do, please, if you can, hit that subscribe button, share this video already so somebody could see it, and give us a big fat like, if you will. I appreciate it so much. And really quick, shout outs to my dude, man, Victorious, man, because you already know the Rams did their thing. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Football season coming, and you know we're going to be watching it from the casita. But uh, let's get it, man. Today's guest is the homie, the brother right here, host, writer, rapper, DJ, producer, comedian, motivational speaker og member of lighter shade of brown and from the beginnings he was there ladies and gentlemen it is beto chulo vergara What's yeah. up, brother? i'm just happy to be here i'm glad i made it i made it in the top 10 hey, <laughs> hey well we got plenty of those uh, see, you know episodes coming top 10, even though there was only four of us man right <laughs> I'll just play. I'll just play, bro. <laughs> no what you know the thing about this is um you know, we got the producers who were involved. Uh, everybody has a story. Whoever was around at that time will be able to tell their story. And I think we owe it to the fans, you know what I'm saying, to, to like, you know, take them there. You know what I mean? Since there is no book or no, you know, documentary yet. It's coming. Uh, well, my, my part. My oh, you got something that we know about? We, we don't know stuff. about? No, no. Oh, look at, look at. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into All that. Right. I'm just happy to be here, man. Thank you for inviting me. I've been waiting 20 years to get invited to something. <laughs> well, you know, like they say, it's man, here. sometimes it takes time, brother, you know, and everything comes back full circle, huh? <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. Uh, this um, discussion here, bro, you started with us back in the day. Um, Chulo is best known for, from what I know, is for his verse from the very first title track of the first titled album, Brown and Proud. Um, Brown and Proud. And uh, let's start real quick, bro. Where did you grow up? I know you represent the P-Town, Pomona. Shout out to Pomona so heavily, but was that where you were born and raised? P-Town, born in East LA, but I was raised in Pomona from the age of one. Okay. Uh, grew up in Pomona. Man, back then it was, it was awesome. Even though there's bullets flying around, it was still, yeah. it was just an awesome childhood. Right. <laughs> 70s, right? Well, I was born in, do I have to say the year? I mean, Easy you don't. used to lie about the year I was born. Can I lie about the year I was born? I, I'm pretty much I, guessing many 70s. I'll tell you what, I, I was in elementary school, late 70s, early 80s. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> and so did you grow up with siblings or did you have i have a little brother uh three years younger than me ricky shout out to ricky okay and then uh 17 years later my mom had a little i had a little sister 17 so, years later yes man how Crazy. was your mom when she had that? right wait hold on i'm trying to do the math how my how <laughs> right. mom was i was kind of dangerous i was, I was a senior in high school when okay. when my little sister was born so she's like my other daughter okay yeah um same dad no my, okay. my mom and dad got divorced when I was 14. All and right. I started rapping when I was 12. I uh, started DJing when my mom and dad got divorced to try and make some money. Right. Um, and then uh, three years later, my sister was born. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you got, when your mom divorced with your dad, did, did she marry right away or how long was it before? No, it took a little while. Uh, it was a crazy story. Dad, I was trying to be funny here. Now you're getting me emotional. Uh, no, no, already. I'm just, oh, I'm man. Just, you got any funny Kleenex anyway. over there, Moons? <laughs> <laughs> you got Kleenex? We already got a couple. I get you one. I can get we you. We already got a couple in us <laughs> no, right here. Play. Salud, brother. I just play, bro. Hey, it's gonna get real. It's gonna Salud. get funny. It's gonna I get like everything. Yeah, hey, you were right. You in. never That's know what cool. to expect when you come on the block out. Let's just throw that out there, bro. <laughs> no, I was. I grew up with two parents. Uh, my mom and dad. My dad raised me. I, I didn't. This is funny because I didn't know I was a, 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 a stepson. It was hidden from me, you know, Mexican families. No le digas. Really? No le digas. Yeah, I didn't know until. Ooh, uh, it just got uh, real. Uh, I found my birth certificate when I was 13 years old. You found it? Yeah. Under I don't know what it was doing under the couch. 
And I thought, I thought my aunt, I thought my tia Mom gave me up for a Dad yeah. was trying to like put something in his name or something. Yeah, I need I to put this like, utility bill what in there. this? <laughs> what the heck? No, it was just crazy because I was raised uh, by my stepdad, but he's my dad. He's the only dad I ever knew. There you go. And um, um, they got divorced when I was 14. And when my dad left, my mom got went through a big de hard depression. She was the hardest working woman, but sure. then she just quit her. She got well. She quit her job, and we got on welfare, and I had to make money. I started trying to you know do stuff in the streets. And you were twelve years old around when they time? got divorced. I was fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Yeah. So I stole my first car when I was a freshman in Hello. high school. Hello. Not to glorify it, no, but we've but all been there. Trust me. I had to give my mom the money. I was <laughs> trying to find a job. What are you doing? Why aren't you in school? I was in school. I was getting straight A's my whole life. Yeah. Um, school was easy for me. But that kind of uh, set you back, but obviously, that, like, and made you go a different route. I had to find ways to hustle. Yeah. And, and growing up in, in the islands in Pomona, all my friends were hustling. So I had to try to find ways to make money. Uh, took mm. a rap to tell my stories because I used to write in my journal. Yeah. But my mom and dad would fight when I was depressed. Growing up, I always had a journal and I would just write in it. Remember those composition books? Yep. Little yep. white books? Yep. The black and white ones. <laughs> yep. 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 I would write in those. And uh, then at 12 years old, I heard uh, I, I was outside with my friends in my front yard, just hanging out with my little friends from on my street. And I saw this one blood with no shirt, with red Levi's, red snake skin mm -hmm. belt with the big old we used to call them ghetto blasters yeah yeah boom boxes playing that song uh uh, uh friends dun, 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 dun. How, how many of us, us have them? them hey friends and i was like wow and i heard the rap that rap and my friend next door had a little dr rhythm boss drum machine yeah and i went to his house i we said i want to rap yep and he made a beat and I was 12 years old and I wrote my first rap. I stole half of it. Back then, I used to bite lyrics. Cause okay. I, you know, from. Oh, we all did. I, yeah. Dude, Rock Kim was like <laughs> my second book. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, so I, I wrote my first rap at 12 years old and I knew I wanted to do this because I've always wanted to be a singer growing up, but I couldn't sing. Right. And it didn't hit me till I was 12 that I couldn't sing. Right. So I wrote my first rap at 12. I would go to the junior high uh, uh, during lunch yep. and somebody would beatbox and we rap yep. and I was the only Mexican kid rapping and they would just laugh at me like, what? Now, who is they? Every other rapper and kid around me and the kid do beatboxing, the girls around and because I sucked my first year. No shit. I so even sucked. the guy that was beatboxing for you laughed? He would just laugh. I'm just like, damn, what this? It's like, fool, why you, why you beatboxing yeah, for yeah. me then? Why you yeah. yeah. Like, and then I just like went home like, man, and I wrote for a whole year. Eighth grade, eighth grade, the eighth grade dance before right. we graduate and go to high school. Damn, bro. Our stories are similar. Yep. Tell it. Tell it, bro. I just wrote and wrote and wrote. Never showed no one else I could rap still. And at the last dance, Cisco Kid, he was the most famous DJ in Pomona. All right. He DJed our dance. And he said, we got any rappers in here? Any MCs? Everybody went up. I went up. I would try to get the mic. He would, he would give it to someone else. I would go like that. Give the mic to someone <laughs> you, were not, you were that kid on the I field, bro, kid, where right. like, they would pick teams? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, and, 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 yeah. Well, in, in hip-hop, yeah. So then uh, uh, finally, I was the last kid to rap. I get on the mic. I do my, the, this verse. At the end of my verse, everyone just like, Oh, I get killed like, it. Standing over. Yeah, well, everyone was standing already, but everyone just clapped and made noise. Do you remember that verse? Oh, my goodness. I know you do. I, uh, I know I, you. Come on. Everybody remembers their very first rap, bro. I, I, no? I, don't, I, I remember All right, some cool. of it, but I don't. Yeah. I was there, let me ask you, was there another, were there other MCs at this time at your school? Oh, man, we had a Casper C. He was the best rapper in our school, Casper C. Okay. And uh, uh, Was he Mexicano? He, no, he was black. Okay. I, I, they were none. But I you were the only, only Latino only that was Latino attempting rap. to rap yes, at this time. Yes. Okay. There was no other Latinos rapping. But where I grew up, we were the only Mexican family in our whole block. And in the islands at that time, there would be like one Mexican family on this street. Then around the corner, there'd be like one white family. And then around that corner, another one Mexican family. Right. And so where I grew up, I learned the culture, you know, the, the, uh, just growing up, all my friends. But we didn't look at color back then. I didn't. Uh, oh, bro. All my friends came over for the Mexican food, though. Come on, dude. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to push, man. Like, yes. brown and black. Like, no. if you know, you know. You grew up in the, in, yes. in the hood. Yes. It was brown and black. It wasn't just yes. uh, uh, a whole Mexican block no. and a whole black, no. black, black, black dude. It was, it was, it was, we grew up the same. And 
I didn't look at my friends as color, and they didn't look at me as color. Right. They knew we had bomb food, but I they had bomb food too. <laughs> Shoot, I go to this house for this, and they go, you know, and and now if you try to talk about that, it's crazy because now it's. Uh, they, some people try to say politically incorrect, but no, I, we we grew up. We didn't see color. Right. I didn't see color, and 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 when I when I did that verse at thirteen, when I got to high school, man, I just kept writing, kept writing, learned how to DJ. I bought a a realistic turntable uh -huh. with my friend. I, I Ooh, shout out to the realistic turntable. Remember realistic man, you turn know you Radio know. Shack, <laughs> the little square ones. Yeah, no, little real. Oh, you had the longer one. No, the, the 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 they were the regular size one, but they had no pitch control. Oh, and then okay. The realistic. A uh, mixer okay. from Radio Shack, Radio Shack, everything you could buy. Oh, man. And that's how I started to DJ, to try to make money right. to help my mom out. There you go. To help with our and mortgage. Did you say you had turntables or no? Yeah, me and my friend went halves. Uh, I stole a car, <laughs> sold the rims. Got some turntables. Man, got one turntable and half a mix. He really went from the wheels of steel, <laughs> the wheels to the wheels of steel. Yeah, and my other friend hey, had that was, other hey, hold on, man. That's that kind of funny. Say it again. The it wheels again. of steel, because he stole <laughs> to buy some wheels of steel. All right. Yep. And we built our own little DJ booth. Yeah. <clears throat> we had the home speakers and started DJing events Heck yeah. to make money. And so you I started would, off uh, as a DJ then? Yep. Well, I was a rapper at 12. Well, I wanted to be a rapper at 12 and 13, yeah, but, but they coincide with 14 each other. freshman year, I was already DJing quinceañeras. Were you rapping at these quinceañeras? Not at the quinceañeras, but then flyer oh, yeah, they flyer flyer parties. They look at you yeah. crazy back there. They're like, 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 So, so then, uh, 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 flyer parties start, you know, flyer parties were big back then. And yeah. I would show up flyer parties and if they had an MC, I would always grab the mic and I would start to rap. Sure. Do rap. And then, uh, uh, did you ever get your name on flyers? Oh, bro. Feature? It didn't happen until, yeah. uh, I got on kiss FM. Now fast forward. Now it's my senior year and kiss FM, the rhyme fighting. Competition. Wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah. Fast forward. Wait, you talking about, uh, the 1990 uh, Kiss FM uh, Rhyme Fighting Competition, yes. Universal Studios, yes. the um, one where you came on stage and Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. I think we yeah. might just have a clip of that. Let, let, let's take a look really? at that, bro. I think, I think, no. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Do it. Let's, let's, let's run that moon. Let's see what we got here. What? The battle. <laughs> Very next episode, they, they well there they said I won on the Yo MTV Raps next episode. There was uh -huh. no Latinos, no Mexicans on MTV or Yo MTV, and uh, they said I won, and they said my name Chulo, and that they could, they said Latin hip hop is Let's about go. to explode. Let's go! You have that clip. Said. That clip's yep. gotta oh, be somewhere. Oh, I gotta find it. I can't find Dude, it. Dude, find that clip. And I was so ex they said my name. They said I won, and they said Latin hip hop is about to explode. Uh, and and uh, so how old were you right here? I was. 18 senior year in high school 1990 this this is my was this after year. you met us or before before that's how i met right met you yeah oh, that's right that's right okay all right yep. let's go ahead tell your story yeah so before to get to that that was the finals you had to rap on the i was going to a party with my girlfriend at the time our party crew and this is when i was rapping on now they're giving me the mic and i'm getting my name on flyers now so i we have it on kiss fm Right. And then this comes on, this rhyme fighting competition. And I'm like, man, those dudes, they, they suck. You know, back then, you know, you have to have a big head to be a, a rapper. Right. At that, well, I, ego, yeah. Ego. And yeah. I said, I'm going to call do. on Monday. I'm going to call on Monday. I'm going to win this because the winner got 100 bucks. You have to rap a cappella for uh, 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 30 seconds against someone else. And then the people call and vote. Sure. So the following Monday, I call. And my mom's on welfare. We have no money. And they had me on hold for like 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. They had me rap first. Uh, uh, what's your name? I said, Chulo. And then, uh, your, uh, Hollywood Hamilton says, Chilo? <laughs> what's Chilo? <laughs> I said, no, Chulo. <laughs> he says, oh, no, I'm going to call you MC Chulo. I said, okay. Because right. I was just Chulo. And he said, MC Chulo. That's dope. Yeah. He says, all right, I'm going to get back to you in 30 minutes. You're going to rap against the champion. Yeah. So the so it starts uh the champion raps and then i rap and i win so i'm just thinking of the 100 bucks oh yeah. i just want 100 bucks all right our new champion mc chulo from pomona 
Next day, I had to do it again. So it called, I'm on hold. I rap against someone else. Yeah. I went again. MC Chulo from Pomona. And there's some, ep- I got to find these cassettes or, or back, you know, cassettes. Right, right, man. You got to. And, and he would say, Chulo destroyed you and this and that. And then if I win six times, I go to the finals. So I win four times, five times, six times. I'm in the finals. I yeah. win seven times. No one's won seven times. Eight times. No one had won eight times. I won eight nights in a row against rappers from everywhere. So then the ninth night, when I go to rap again, he tells me, Chulo, okay, you already broke the record. Even if you win, I'm going to say you lose. We need more, more uh, finalists. Right. I said, oh, all right. I wanted more money, you know? So, sure. How, so, much was, how much were you winning? 100 bucks a night. So okay. I won 800 bucks. The record, no one had won eight nights. And, and this is the biggest rap competition in all of Southern California. And so the ninth night, I just freestyled a rap. I freestyled 16 bars. Uh, 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 thanking everyone that voted for me, everyone that supported me. 16 and bars is a verse, it, it, a, a whole a standard yeah. verse, basically. Yeah. So I freestyled 16 bars, just thanking everyone. And by this time now, I'm on every flyer at every party now as guest MC. MC Let me Chulo. ask you, did you flow, did you do Sp- Spanglish at all in, in any of the, your, your uh, phone battles? I did English and Spanish. And at this time, no one was rapping in Spanish. And I was doing tongue twisters in Spanish, which was unheard of. You could, just like we saw on the screen? Yeah, like... Yeah, no one was doing that, and, and, and very few people were doing it in English. But I started doing it in Spanish before anybody else was doing it. You know it. what I see when I see it up there, and, and I say it to this day, and even after seeing this video for the first time, um, do you remind me of a, of a, of a Latino, Chicano, uh, Big Daddy Kane, bro, for wow. some reason? Maybe your height, but the way that Big Daddy Kane yeah. flipped his style like that, that yeah. was the style back then, and very few people yeah. could do that style. He so. was my idol. Yeah. That was my idol. I wanted to be Big Daddy Kane. Hey, yeah. what's up, bro? Come on, man. <laughs> Big Daddy. Yeah. I wanted to be, you see how I was dressed, too, back yeah. then? That was, yeah. and I wanted to be Big Daddy Kane so bad. And, and, and then I get a call from a guy called Cliff Ritchie. Okay. Before the finals. He said, I got your number from Hollywood Hamilton. I have a group called A Lighter Shade of Brown. We need a third member. I said, what? A Lighter Shade of Brown? And, I, you know, at that time, my head was big. And, and uh, I, he says, it's, they're going to be like the, he told me the exact, I remember the conversation clearly. It's crazy. Like the Mexican NWA. Yeah, that's how he put it? Yeah, that's what he said. Well, we're kind of <laughs> far off from that. Yeah, but, right? I know. I mean, but that's what he said. Uh, uh, I said, what? I said, but I'm not a gangster rapper. Right. I, I didn't know, you know, I sure. didn't, that's what he told me. A Mexican, be, uh, no, he said a, a Mexican NWA. I said, yeah. but I'm not a gangster rapper. He says, no, well, okay, I'm going to have, oh, oh, Ro-, he said Robert. He didn't yeah. say ODM. He, he calls yeah. Robert and Bobby. Yeah, he said, I'm going to have Robert call you. It's a song uh, called on this, uh, uh, Brown and Proud. It's the title track. I was like, Brown and Proud? Because at that time, I was real uh, 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 political yeah i I, I would argue he was rocking the medallion and everything i was rocking my medallion i was arguing with my history teacher every day telling them why can i learn my history why Mm. are we learning everybody else christopher you know back then that started he didn't discover america you know and and latino so you already knew some of the history chicano history i researched it i researched it i'm telling you i was a very good student school was easy so i researched latino history the mexican history latinos in hollywood i researched everything I was just in the library, just reading books, reading books. And I said, I want to hear about my history. It's cool that we hear everyone else's history, but yep. why can I? And he says, well, you, you guys didn't get here till the 70s. <laughs> That's what my history teacher told me. <laughs> and we don't get to that part what? of the book. <laughs> yeah. What? He said, we don't get to that part of the book. By that time, it's the end of the semester. We don't get back. And I said, I need to learn my. And he would kick me out. Go to the, go to the principal's office. Yeah, they didn't want to hear it. That didn't want to hear it, and and so they, at that time it was just so sensitive because uh, I mean even later on in life I think I told yeah. the story uh, where they didn't even have Chicano studies in, nope. in some of the colleges or universities, so that had to be fought for um, back in the day. So I man, wait wait till I tell you this next story. And my wife tripped. I'm like I'm like the Mexican Forrest Gump, but fun but smart. <laughs> <laughs> like I was a part of this and that and that and that, right. that, but behind the scenes. So we didn't have Chicano studies. We had Cinco de Mayo week. I, I had read up on the Brown Berets and how they would do protests and yep. sit-ins and yep. all that. And so I said, we're going to have a protest today. We had a Cinco de Mayo uh, uh, in the, the DJ during lunchtime. Yep. So I grabbed the mic and I say, how come we only have a week? 
Cinco de Mayo week. Mm. And I start going off on, and you know, how we've been here since Aslan, you know, the whole right. thing about Aslan and uh, uh, the indigenous people were here first and this and that. And, and I had everyone sit down in the, in the center quad at school. And I said, we're not going to class until we get a whole month. You were starting a movement within yes. your school. We need a month. We need, and we don't even have to call it Chicano. We could say Latino Heritage Month. I swear you, this is a true story. Wow. And they're like, what? what? We, I had everybody sit down. People just sat down and waited. We're not going to class till you, uh, till you say that we're going to have uh, Latino Heritage Month, the whole month. Why yeah, can't yeah, we get yeah. a month instead of a week? You know, Cinco de Mayo, they don't even celebrate that in Mexico. So I was so, it was crazy, brother. Yeah. So, so they, they say, okay, we'll go to the office. We'll go talk to you. I was the spokesperson for Mecha at the time. Mm. And, uh, uh, so, Mecha was the only form of like Mexicano studies or Chicano yes, studies yes, within the high school yes. for those that don't remember. Yes. And it was all about Chicano studies. But then we, I realized that there's Central Americans too. You know, yeah, it was Chicano studies, but there was also Central Americans that didn't get any respect or love or nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, so he said, if you tell everyone to go to class, we'll go meet right now in the office and we'll show you. And I said, how come we don't get more, as much money as all the other clubs get? <laughs> you know, mm. I, I didn't even, that part I just made up. I just wanted to get in there and then talk to the principal and, and vice principal. And so I sent everyone to class. Everyone went to class. They said, okay, we won't do it this, this year, but next year we'll have a Latino Heritage Month. So I tell my wife now, when you see it on TV and the news, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. I started that. I started that. <laughs> I was no part of that, know. man. Yeah, but no one will know that. So you, were you even in USB or any of this, these, no, these programs? Just you just, I was just in Mecha. Just Mecha. Yeah. yeah, but still, that, at that's that big, time, bro. At that time, uh, uh, I knew I could get straight A's, but I just knew I was going to make it as a rapper. So I would do enough in class just to get C's and D's. Just to, then I just stopped getting A's. Yeah. And I just, all right, I'll get a D. I'll get a C. I'm going to be famous. I don't, need, I don't yeah. need school. Yeah. And it was in my head. I just knew I was going to be famous. Right. And so, <laughs> this is another, but so in 1991 now, now it's 1991, because I had to stay an extra semester because of some, uh, it was, uh, so we did Latino Heritage Month the next following year. They did it. And that's oh, when it shit. started. For real. So you can Man, look it up. That's find big. out. Started in Pomona. Yeah, <laughs> P-Town. Like, yep. Latino Heritage Month. Hey, bro, we're going to have to put you on the board somewhere, man. Isn't that crazy? This, right now, it's tough right now. Yeah. Heavily. Yeah. I mean, you know, we just recently, I don't know if you saw, but we recently got a, an award. Uh, City of Santana recognized Lighter Shade of Brown wow. as uh, the first uh uh, a proclamation for Chicano Heritage Month, with which is the month of August. Wow! And that just and it's crazy that you're telling us yeah. this right now. Yeah. And look where it's come, and it's finally people are starting to see, you yes. know, uh, the fruits or the uh, the labors, yeah. I should say. Fruits, yes. For for everything as far as Chicano, yes. Mexicano, Americanos are, are concerned. Yeah. But that's great. But all right, so tell me, so from there, Cliff Ritchie asked you oh. to come down. Yeah, Man. so now, th this was after, uh, uh, so Cliff Ritchie said he wanted me to be a part of the group. I said, all right, I'll do it. And, and then uh, then he said something. Uh, he says, okay. I said, well, send me the track so I could write. And he said, well, some of the songs are already written. There was two songs. And I said, can I write my verse for that? And I'll, I'll be in the group. And he says, no, these songs are already written. I think you and Bobby had already written the songs. The rest of the album? Yeah. Okay. But, like, well, we st they still hadn't done on a Sunday afternoon, Latin acted. Okay. Those weren't done yet. Or Brown and Proud wasn't done yet. Okay. Those three. But, and, 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 uh, uh, but everything else, I think you guys had already recorded. Okay. Right? okay. I don't remember exactly. But I said, oh, man, if you let me, just let me write my verse. He says, okay. no, the songs are already written, those songs. The whole album's not done, but... That there were songs that were already done. You guys had already. We recorded. had completed. Okay, I got yeah. you. You remember? So he he just wanted you to rap on a couple songs. Then. Yeah. No, he wanted me to join the group. Group. Okay. So I said, well, if you let me re write my own verses on those songs, I'll join the group 100. percent I'll be in the group. I just want a rap competition. Let me write my lyrics. I'm sure they're good lyrics to add to the songs that we had already recorded. Yes. Got you. Yes. Got you. But he said no because he already they were already written. And I said, oh, <laughs> that said, you could sense, write, bro. right? I said, then he said, well, you could write your own verses on the new songs that aren't done yet. Okay. And me being a big head. I, I want to be on all the songs. Yeah. If I'm going to be part of the group. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Or I at least, you. yeah. And, and, and he says, but 
we'll, we'll take this verse. You could have that verse, but write, wrap the verse. It's so what done. it sounds like, as you're telling me yeah. in retrospect, it's like uh, he wanted you more as a feature on the album. That's what it's yeah. sounding like. It's like, yeah. okay, I want you to be part of the group, but, but these songs are done. So it's like, uh, yeah, just wrap on these two. And, and to me, that sounds like a feature if you think yeah. about it. So I said, oh, man, I said, no, nah, well. Then I said, what if, because, and then that's where I knew, I knew that's what he was getting at. So I just said, well, I'll just be a feature. I just said it myself. Oh, okay. What if I just feature and, and maybe feature on a few of the songs? That, that, and that's when it, he says, okay, yeah, we'll put, he says, well, the title track's called Brown and Proud. I'll have Robert rap his verse for you. And he said, ODM too. His name's ODM. Yeah. I'll call, have him call you, rap your verse, his verse. And so you could get an idea what the song's about. And okay. when I heard Brown and Proud, I was like, wow, this is what's going on right now with me in, in school yeah. and, and everything. Right, right, right. So you called me, you wrapped your verse. Oh, brother, i tell you, everyone in the world right now that I said, wow. I said, I never heard another Mexican rapper that can rap as good as me. That's they, what I said. They were you. unheard of because yep. you, you didn't know that no. because there was only so many yes. rapping. I, I said, man. I said, yeah. well, besides me, you're, you're the best rapper. Right, right. No, 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 that. That's you fair remember? enough. That's yeah. fair enough. Yeah. But, but I was like so impressed by your verse. And yeah. I said, wow. I, it just brought me. I spirit, Thank you, so. brother. No, I, yeah, you we the dopest, bro. In our minds as yeah. rappers, you come, you yes. have egos. Yes. Like, I'm the dopest. Yes. You're dope, but you're not doper yeah. than me. Yeah. <laughs> and if your verse would have sucked, I would have been like, hell no, I don't want to be a I'm part not of doing this. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But your verse impressed me so much that I said, wow. And I told you, you're the best Mexican rapper I've her, ever heard. That's love, myself. brother. But I, said that, but I said that to you. And I was just, oh, man, I better come with a good verse then. Right. And I told... Uh, so that whole week, they're in between classes. I was writing a bar, two bars, and I wrote. So Bob, you didn't hear DWTX's part no, yet, just yours. Okay, gotcha. and that sold me. Um, yeah, but then by that time, I had told Cliff I'll be a feature. Uh, if he would let me re write one verse that, that of the songs that were done, I yeah. would have said yes. And he didn't even tell you guys, huh? Now nah, this is all new to me, bro. Wow. This, he asked yeah. me to be the third member. But I said, but don't you already have three members? He said, oh, he's a DJ. Fabe loves a DJ. Uh, 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 and, and, and so I said, I'll be a feature. And I, I don't know if he was getting at that, but that's crazy that you never knew this. I, I just know that. No, I didn't. That, this is one of the reasons why I invited you to the platform yeah. because these, these, this is the yeah. specific reason why I didn't to learn about all these uh, memories or phone calls and conversations yeah. that you want to share. I did not know that Cliff wanted you to be in the group in lighter the group, shade of Brown. 100%, yeah. In fact, I was one, I was like, man, like. Dude, like he's rolling with us, you know. There's yes. other people teardrop, and we'll, we'll get yes. into that. But you know, other people on, on the actual album. Yes. Then I'm like, okay, like, but to me, I always thought that you were a feature because that's the way he yes. made a scene. Because he, yep, yep. And, and I told him if you let me, I told him like ten times that night on the phone. I said, if you let me write my verse on the songs that are already done, I'll be a member a hundred percent. And you guys had already got your your your. Uh, your uh, signing, you know, your signing money, Our everything advanced, done. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. says we'll take, uh, we'll, we'll take a new picture. You guys are already taking the picture for your. Did album. he at any time ask, tell you, explain to you, like, okay, we'll do this, and 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 uh, this will set you up for your solo album. He did that later. Oh, oh yeah, he that did came that later. The whole time. Okay, let's yeah. get it. Let's yeah. get into it, baby. Yeah. All no, right, he all said right. that. Just think of it as. And so me in my head, I was a solo. I, my vision, I'm the Mexican Big Daddy King. But then I said, yes, because I love what you were doing, what the concept was of right. the group. And, and, and when you did your verse, I'm like, dang, I just got so excited to rap with another yeah. Mexican that could rap. No, nah, bro. You know. Chulo came rap. with it, bro. Like, I so, will always remember to this day, the way you flowed your verse, the Spanish verse. Um, how does it go, bro? I mean, I, don't know. I, forgot, I forgot how you, bro, but the way it just yeah. flowed off your tongue, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, I had never heard another dude, even to this day, flow so smoothly like that. And I'm a Mexicano and proud, and yeah. I respect my molecule. How's it going? I'm uh, being very serious and don't need to be ridiculed. Think me some positivity and not what's wrong. Let's unite to fight for what's right, right and, and be, be strong. strong. Yeah. Uh, keep and, going. And always straight up, I never allow disrespect. disrespect. I'm tired of people putting down and trying to neglect yeah. my nationality yeah, and or formality. Yes, everything I talk about is factuality. Okay, me bien porque debemos juntarnos que, Woo, sí. que termine la violencia y vivir como hermanos. Bro, Think of stop, the stop, the stop. Fought. Yes. Right there? Yes. That just set the bar yeah. even higher. There was others doing it. 
But let me tell you something. It was like we, we called it earlier. We were to the races. We yes. were trying to see who can bubble and yes. get put out first mainstream, have yes. a CD out in Melbourne, yes. have that shit on wax. Yes. And Chulo yes. did that with just those oh, fucking and, four bars, bro, yep. in Spanish, bro. So I commend you on that. And bro. if Cliff would have said, okay, you can write your verses. I would have said yes. And you guys would be like, wait, what? It's just us two. You know, like, no, nah, because he told me that. And so when, when I just did the feature and then he says, then he said, you could feature on a Sunday. Remember, uh, he said, we haven't written on a Sunday afternoon. That's another song about this, about that. Yeah. Robert hasn't written his verse. Only yeah. Bobby. Right. So that's when you guys pick me. Uh, he says, the guys are going to pick you up on Friday so you can kick it with them get to yeah. know them yeah and then you guys picked me up we kicked over in your hood we were yeah. in riverside okay All and, right. and i was like okay cool bobby started rapping his verses to me in the, in the little mini truck i don't know whose mini truck that was fabian's fabian had the mm -hmm. truck they yeah. went to my house i had my little drum machine at the time and damn. my mom was so proud of me and i was like wow i'm on my way you know i was like damn, yeah. i'm gonna be a part of this album and 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 i was just so excited just to yeah. be a part of the album and uh that's when Cliff, uh, he Cliff had told me that, okay, we'll just feature and then we'll get you your own record deal as a Mexican. So what happened there? Was it the, that we um, didn't, we didn't want you guys part. Cause you mentioned something there that either I had an issue or no, no, you, no. Oh. you being part of the oh. song. No, no, no. Uh, 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 so when he told me that, cool, he's going to shop me my own deal. I, I was happy again. Like, okay, I'll get a deal. Yeah. Yeah. So then we went to feature and remember we went to his apartment in Glendale Yep. and you wrote verse. And then I wrote the third verse. Yeah. And then, um, and that's when, uh, remember when I recorded the third verse, but I put my name all over it. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. You no, I don't remember you that. Remember? No, this and, is dope, uh, though. <laughs> and then, uh, it's funny because I, I rapped the verse to my wife, the original with my name on it. And, and she's like, oh, I would have took you off of it too. <laughs> she said, but then, and then she's, we went to the studio the next day and he said, the guys are mad. I was like, why? This is what Cliff told me. I don't know. All right. True. Come on. He says, I'll, they I'll said, confirm it right yeah, now. Tell me. He said, uh, cause they say you don't want to be in the group, but you're all over their album. So we're going to take you off the third verse on a, on a Sunday afternoon. And um, I was like, well, am I still getting some writing credit? You know, I didn't know at that time. So wait, wait, wait. At this point, you were all over the album in terms of writing or they was recorded? Because recorded. Because I did Brown and Proud. Only because I did Brown and Proud on Sunday afternoon, the third verse. So there is a verse with your vocals on there already with Sunday afternoon? There was, but it got taken off. You don't remember? I don't remember, really? bro. How did your verse, verse go? Yes. How did I, your verse I, I, go? I forgot the middle part, ah. but I said my name. I said, how you doing, baby? My name is Chulo. And then something, like, I forgot, or the, the middle part. You, you, you redid that, that part. You rewrote it. And, and, and when you say. So you want uh, me and Bob D, D split the yeah, third verse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were part of the second verse, uh, no, the, the third verse? verse? Yeah. Or you remember, wrote a whole 16? No, I had the whole 16. Okay. You remember you wrote the second in Cliff's, Cliff's uh, apartment, and then I wrote the third. Verse. Verse, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, the next day, that's when I, uh, well, okay, so when we are at his apartment, I told Cliff, Hey, Cliff, my girlfriend can rap. You never heard a Mexican girl that can rap, huh? And yeah. he's like, what? No. So I called Tear Teardrop and we were together already. Uh, man, since we were 15, we were, it was 18, three years already. And we had a little group. I had a group. We were called the Legion of Doom. Me, Teardrop, and my friend uh, 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 Larry Love. Had okay. His name. And we had a group. And so I called Teardrop. I said, hey, they don't believe you can rap. Can you do that verse I just wrote for you? She said, no, I don't want to do it. No, because it was never in her heart like it was mine. Right. I just wanted her to be a part of what sure. I was doing. Yeah. I was like Ike Turner. Like, I was like, <laughs> I sing it, anime. Sing it like you mean it. Wow. <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I hand the mic, I mean, the, the, the phone to Cliff, and she did a verse for Cliff. Okay. And this was at his apartment when we, we had just written. On sure. Sunday after. And uh, uh, he hands me the mic, and, I mean, the phone, and walks away. And I said, oh, dang, he didn't like her. And then he comes back later and says, there's a song called uh, Latin Active. We're going to take Fabe's, we could just take Fabe's That's verse off. That's right. DJ Fabe, yeah, that was the middle was verse. The middle verse. He said, we, teardrop. Yes, okay. we could take his verse off. Can you write a verse for her by tomorrow? 16 bars. And it's a, we, we sampled a, uh, Radioactive, Let's Jam. It's yep. like that, but called Latin Active. I was like, hey, that's tight. Boom, well, you tripping out on this over there, bro? And I said, yeah, yeah I can write a sure. verse for her hey. by tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that some history right now? Yeah, you all get the skinny right now, this bro. Like, I'm yeah. glad I remember this. I said, yeah, I could write a verse for her by tomorrow. So I go home after we did, uh, we had just done, uh, uh, we did Brown and Proud. Uh, 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 and my voice was on a Sunday afternoon, the third verse. Damn, okay. you know, I, man, I wish he would have I, I wish I would have had it. I, I'll try to remember it. But uh, uh, so then 
I tell I get home, I say, hey, you're going to be on the album. She's like, why? No, why? this is your thing. And she was so mad. So I, so was it the Denise, or excuse me, yeah. Teardrop, was she not rapping or she just she did it for fun? She was rapping with me and my group for fun because I would write for her and we would rap, me and, and yeah. her and my friend, and, and, okay. and the three of us had a group. Okay. But and you guys would rock parties was, together and yeah. stuff. Okay, dope. And it was just cool for me. And, and sure. it wasn't in her heart like it was mine. So, so. Got you, got you, know, you like got it you. It was my life, my, my, man, my dream. Yeah. So she did it for me. And then um, I wrote a verse. And then you end up taking half of it, uh, the beginning part. You did the beginning part. Okay. When uh, the Brown Queen part, I thought that was dope. The Brown Queen. Oh, uh, you mean I wrote a little bit on? Yeah, the first the Brown Queen part. <laughs> Guys, I don't remember shit about like. Isn't that sad? Like I, because yeah. I thought he wrote her whole yeah, verse. I wrote now the it turns rest, out that I wrote you did some. The, uh, you wrote the first teardrop. Two, uh, putting the, the others in the sickness. sickness. Brown like, Queen. A Brown Queen known to. But remember the original said Mexican. Yes, and I put that. And, yeah. And if you bought the yes. second album, which was re wrapped, yes. which we uh we we would remix, she had it. Yes. She changed it to. Yes. Uh, they had uh, the, the label made her change it. Made her change it. It said a Mexican female, dope to get with a this. Latin female. And then yeah, and then I said Chicana when I wrote the Chicana taking over the microphone that's at right. Place. The original one said Chicana. That's right. And 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 I wrote that part, yep. and then they made her say it, Latina. Latina, because they wanted in their minds they wanted it to be more universal, more broad, yes, not just broad for Latinos. Mexicanos, yes. but that'll yes. you know everywhere yes the, the map and so wow. so she came with me the next day and that's when cliff said the guys are mad because you're all over the album and you don't want to be a hundred percent in the group and then see I that said, don't that don't right that don't sound right like how, how would we not how right. wait, first of all if we wrote if you were on all or most of our album and we no, knew just those about two songs oh you were only on Bright two and proud and and on sunday afternoon Oh, okay, because you made it seem like no, that, no, that you were no. on all the songs. No, no. just So you were on two songs. Yeah. Oh, okay, all and right. That, but that's what he said. I said, well, okay, if they if they could use my lyrics, but will I get credit? And he says, oh, oh yeah, because not only did you record, but you were writing, too. Yes. So that's what yes. it made, made it seem like he was part of the group. Yes. yes. Got you. And so uh, uh, Teardrop did her verse. And remember, they couldn't find a singer. Are we La La transitioning to Shiro right no, now? No, back to oh, not yet, but okay. No, but then Teardrop did her verse. Right. We record. We we I wrote it for her the night before. We went back. She did her verse, and um, then Cliff said, "Don't worry, I'm going to shop you your own deal." So I was like, "Cool." Okay. And then, but cool. Yeah, but it was crazy. And then remember, we we started the tour. I was with you guys, and and did you okay th th here's where my mind just went blank because i know yeah. once latin active was recorded the whole album was released brown and proud yes i i remember teardrop coming on tour with us for for like the first leg all, all the promotional tour because we were trying to get our name out there um were you also on that bus were you also on that ride did you do shows yeah, with us i did damn i and did uh, how many was i did all the clubs here in socal uh, I went to Texas uh, with you guys. Uh, we did Houston. We did. Uh, you did Houston San with us. Antonio with Vanilla Ice when he we were on yes, it. And he, Houston, and we, and San Antonio. He, no, we didn't do it with Vanilla Ice, but he was there in town. And then I remember yes. we had took a, a. Did we fly in or we took a van ride? No, we took. No, we drove. We drove. We right? drove in a van like a maroon. Those. Astro the caravan, vans. the caravan. No, yeah, the, the Astro van. The Astro van. With the uh, uh, what was that? The, the guy rapper, or the white guy. He was cool. You remember him? He CJ came ride. too? From Riverside? Yes. With the he long hair, the original came Vanilla. Too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He CJ. Rap too. Wow, I didn't know CJ yes. came on the road with us. We went to Texas. We did San Antonio, Houston. La, la, uh, uh, uh. We did some clubs out there, and then I did all the clubs here in this area. Did you do Did you do, 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 do Dallas with us? Tour. Did you do Dallas with us? With Simon the Diamond? No, because that's when, we, that's when no. Fabian left. That was I don't later. I remember doing that one. And no. we had a new DJ named Freddie. Yeah. No, I didn't. I met, that's when I was, went on my own, and then I started opening up for you guys. Okay, okay, okay. Later. So, okay, so let's go back here. So, when you, did, you, did, you did do some shows with us. So then what happened? What, what made you stop? Because I know there was a point where you and Denise split. Yes, and, and, and uh, we, we broke up. We started fighting, and Cliff's like, man, you guys fight too much. Well, Brian Proud's not a single, so just work on your, your demo. For your record deal, right. go back, go back home. Right, uh, work on your demo. Jamming James is gonna produce three tracks for you. Right, uh, 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 
and we're going to continue the tour because you guys fight too much. So I got kicked off the tour. So I went home. Well, not, yeah, kicked off. You could say that. But then I went with Jamming James Inglewood, and he right. started working on three tracks for me to do my demo. Let me, let me ask you something. Was there any point at during that time when you introduced us to everybody, I say us collectively, um, to Teardrop, um, was there any type of uh, frustration that you had? Because you had already had been written, writing lyrics for us, you know, and, and you were being, we made all these promises and this and that. And I'm sure, and I know what it's like to be that young yes. and be promised or you, yes. you're, you're almost there. You got your foot oh, in, but it's like, there. it's not yeah. happening for you. And you're going, what the? Yes. Like, dude, oh, yeah. really? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing, you're telling me this, you're telling me this, a part of the group or not part of the group. Yes. My lyrics, yeah, they're cool, but yes. is there any point where you saw a teardrop eventually get on a single, hit single, yeah. and you just felt kind of like left oh, behind? Yeah. Oh, yeah, at that time, because I'm like, man, why isn't it happening for me? And I, it was, I for a while, I felt bad that I should have said yes, I should have done it, but I just didn't want to rap anyone else's lyrics as a rapper because I just won this battle. And then there was a time where I was like, man, I should have just done it. And then- uh, uh, Was somebody saw, else offering to write your lyrics? No, with a song. Remember when the clip said, those songs are already written. You could get on those verses, but they're already written. Oh, he wanted you to rap the ones that were already written. Already done. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yes. didn't get that. I didn't get no, that. I thought that they were already You guys already recorded. have the Soul done. And, oh, okay. I, got and, you. Uh, uh, I forgot what other song, but it, he said I could rap those yeah. verses are already done because they like the label likes them. Got and you. So, yeah. Hell no. Nah. You get I'm it, right? I'm on my own lyrics. Yeah. Here. So, been like a ghostwriter, huh? I just want the biggest. He wanted you to get your lyrics with some ghostwriters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, said, I just want the biggest battle in all of LA and soak out. Right, you know? right, right. And I get it. To, you know, and you're I pumped just, right I now. I hadn't even heard I the song. I deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when then when I saw that, when I started working on my demo, I, I was focusing on my demo with, with, with Jamming James, and it was cool because he was going to pitch me as the Mexican Big Daddy Kane. And then I saw Teardrop blowing up. Yeah. And then we were broken up. and. She had got engaged to someone else. And, you know, I was kind of, I was mad about the Stop whole right thing there. for a while. Stop right there. Yes. I, I got to ask, did this have anything to fuel that uh, breakup? The fact that she was, uh, was there jealousy involved? Um, I you think know, I, I, I hit a point or where animosity. I was like, yeah, I, I could imagine. I and it's all it, fair. Yes. It's all honesty. Because like, at the time, I would I'm be like, too. I'm the one who's writing. I'm this. I want it, you know, yeah. I had a big head. I introduced you. Yes, I brought you. You didn't want to do it. And, and you I didn't even want to do it. Yes. Top, but I ain't that and that's how shit. I felt at that's the like, time. Like, yeah. oh, man, it always yeah. happens. And always we didn't happens. talk for a whole year. And I didn't see you guys for a whole year. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I'm going to start a new group. It's going to, I'm going to, I wanted to, in my head, I'm 18 still. You know, we're kids. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I want to start a group that where there's it's no group like this out there. And I wanted to be like a color me bad, like, uh, like, a, like a Mexican color me bad, but rappers. Right, I can see that. And I said, ooh, I have my friend who has a voice and he sounded kind of just like Bobby. Okay. Same type of voice. Okay. KT. He said, he's not a great rapper, but I could write for him. And then my other friend. What happened to your homie, uh, Green Eyes? Wasn't he a rapper too? Or? He was a, our DJ. He was a DJ. All yeah. right. What up, he, Green Eyes? He has a family. Green he's doing good. Okay. He's real, real deep and in, deeply involved in his ministry. Right. Yeah, he, right. He, but, but back then, I remember he was part he of was your one crew. of our, our DJ. He was our DJ. Got it, got it, got it. So I started a group. We were called Vital Signs. And I said, we, we're going to work hard and we're going to, uh, I said, guys are going to hate us because that's when gangster rap was just big. Right. Guys are going to hate us, but the girls are going to love us. There you go. So we started dressing. Like, and I didn't see you guys for a whole year. Yeah. Oh, but rewind. Cliff Ritchie shot me a, a record late, a deal. And um, he says all the labels, he shot me the big labels. He says they love your, uh, your music, your style of rap. He says they'll sign you right now if you do gangster rap. Which label was that? Do you remember? Uh, I remember it was Virgin Capital and Warner Brothers. So all three all had bids three on you? said they'll sign you. They'll sign you, but you got to be gangster. You got to be gangster rap. And I was like, but I'm the Mexican Big Daddy Kane. Don't they get it? I'm trying to sit here and just think why they would want, you mm -hmm. know, maybe because of the success of NWA and, and they wanted themselves a Mexican and, NWA. And Kid Frost had come out already. And, right. and they wanted, and they just thought of Mexicans like we were all. Because we were already mainstream. Yeah, but they were. Uh, Lighter Shade, Frost, and Mellow Man Ace. Mm -hmm. But then there was no gangster and, until probably Brownside came along. Yep, and there was, and they couldn't see a Mexican come out. They're like, Big Daddy Kane, why is he trying to be Big Daddy Kane? You know, like. There's already a Big Daddy Kane. That, yeah. That's the way they looked at yeah. it. Yeah, and they just, then they thought all Mexicans, we should all talk like like Cholos pretty much. Not like see, Cholos. record but, labels don't know this, yeah. man. They should have went ahead and did that because yeah. when we did Sunday afternoon, yeah. 
they wanted us to be like, not be like, but write something similar to Will Smith, Summertime. Yeah. And yeah. that, that's the true story. Yeah. See? And they didn't know what they want. And they, they wanted me to rap gangster rap, but not gang. They wanted me to sound like Kid Frost, pretty much. That's what they told me. We'll sign you right now if you sound like Kid Frost. Oh, I, I see. I said, but I didn't grow up like that. I you know, grow I grew up. up different. I grew up in, where I grew up, right. it was different. I can't, I said, I'm not going to sell. Back then, I said, I'm not going to sell my soul. I was 18 years right, old. Right, right. To me, it felt like I'm selling my soul. I'm going to be someone I'm not. I'm sure. not going to do that. Just, why can't you see my vision? So you turned it down. I turned them down. Props, man. I, I turned them down. I said, it's okay. Ground. I'm going to make it somewhere else. Then he went to the, uh, the independents, and then I met this dude named timothy uh, uh he wanted to manage me he asked to look at my contracts and that's yeah. when it was just that was it when he looked i looked he looked at my contracts i hadn't even read my contract you know that we were going to make the same amount every album deal and then somebody was going to make more and more and more it was just i never even looked at my contracts and he said if i get you out of this contract will you come with me this uh, was your contract yes. with Lighter with Cliff Richie. Yes, we all signed the same one. Uh, Teardrop signed the same one. You and 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 Bobby signed the same contract. You remember the first one? I know it's crazy. See, <laughs> you see that we signed the same contract, and I see, didn't. Know. I, didn't, I didn't know Jack going into that, bro, yeah. because we were young, we were bro. Young. We were just wanted we were to make it. do our passion. We just yep. wanted to rap. Yep, that was it. We yep. didn't care about the money. We yep. didn't care. We just cared about being heard. That being was heard. it. Yes. And, and when those contracts came, and I found out later on, yep. that's when the attorneys came. And yep. y'all need it. If you if you missed it, you know, check out the previous episodes. You know, uh, <laughs> the one with Cliff Ritter. You know, I'm playing, I'm playing Cliff, but. And, it, we we learned though we yeah. we learned from that yeah. that standpoint. yeah and I didn't know I didn't you know I could have read my contract but I didn't I just signed I'm oh I'm gonna make it it's right cool. I don't care what it says you know and so when he 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 translated the whole contract took time to read it with me he said if I get you out of that contract will you come with me and this is a guy who's never managed anything he was a teacher Timothy Oleg yes yeah, so got you yeah. got you and Oleg, he was a yeah. teacher he had at that time he had good intentions you know I I didn't. And I said, really, you get me out of this contract? Yeah, I have a good attorney, this and that. He was a teacher at the high school. Uh, That's right. I hosted a show when you guys perform, and I perform with my group, and I hadn't seen you guys in a year. And now I got, and, and that's where he saw me, and he, he heard Round and Proud and all this, and that's when he wanted to manage me. But I was still locked with Cliff. I got you. That, that must and have been, says, I think, in Ontario yeah, or something. One yes, of the schools. yes, uh, yeah, yeah, Chaffee High School. Chaffee. And he said, you know, you're, you're locked with him for 10 years. You know, most music careers don't even last 10 years. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, you're signed with him 10 years. You can't do nothing with anyone else. You know, he's going to make more money every album, and you're going to make the same amount. I was wow. like, what? So Tim Hughes was a, also a promoter yeah. at the time. and at Well, the time. that I know, because he booked us on a couple yeah. of shows. Yeah. Eventually booked us for a few more. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then I he, don't even remember yeah. if he was in our ears. I think he was just in your yeah. ear doing no, that. No, yeah, just in my ear. And then I said, all right, get me out of it. So then the, the, it turned out that uh, uh through, I, I never talked to Cliff. It was his attorney. His attorney said, okay, my client, Cliff Rizzi, will let you out of your contract if you forfeit all your record sales money. And I said, what? He said, well, we can't take it. He said, well, we can't take or keep your publishing money just because we tried. He, he said, but you'll keep your airplay when they, you know, airplay money, you know, publishing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, of course, you know, but he says, but you have to forfeit all your record sales money and he'll let you out of the contract. I said, you know what? I'm gonna be famous anyway. He could take it and do that. You know, uh, I was mad at the doctor. <laughs> he could tell me keep it. Tell me choke on it. I was just mad. Keep it. That so, sounded like Dr. Dre when he made that move from Death yes, Row on after yes. man. So I, I agreed keep to it. it. And I didn't make one penny off of Brown and Proud album on record sales. So but for I, the record, pun intended. Yeah. What did you write? You wrote your verse on My Brown, verse, Brown and Proud. Proud Teardrop verse, uh, Latin active, and then the third verse on the Sunday afternoon. Most which of it, was never your part. No, so you wrote part of Bobby's. Bobby's part. Yeah. Well, the sun was set, and then yes. began. You wrote that part. Yes. Look, come on, man, give him his flowers, yes. bro, because this is the yes. type of shit you don't see. The you know, you don't hear about cruising Whittier, unless you read. Whole, yeah. Cruising yeah. Whittier is how we ended yeah, up. Yeah. Wow. But you change the parts where I say, uh, "How you doing, baby? My name is Chulo," and then uh, you change it to uh, "Pack the stuff up." But we was on our way. You change that to those I remember two that the you part did. you were saying. Wow. Yeah. Cause you used to always say, "What's up? How you doing, baby? My name is Chulo," and yeah, I would yeah, yeah. say the O to the D to the M I M every time we saw each other. So 
And so I still got my, and then come to find <laughs> I used out. To always say, I still yeah. say, I'm the notorious Chulo. <laughs> so I used to go buy the notorious Chulo before Biggie. Yeah, yeah. But when, <laughs> I, when I gave up, when I just quit music completely, I thought God hated me. I just took it out. But I used to go buy the notorious Chulo. That's right. He says it in the verse. Yeah. And then Biggie came out and I was already out of the business and I was done. I'm like, why are these whack rappers making it? And I haven't made it. And I just quit music all. I used to, you know, I, I was opening it. for Roger for two years straight. I opened for Roger. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to ask you, do you remember where uh, we recorded Brown and Proud? Because we were having that conversation, me and DJ Faith beach. and Jam and James. I don't know was, it was it at the beach? Yes. Got it. I remember if it was Redondo Beach, Venice Beach. It was one of those beaches. The studio was called, do you remember Moons? Well, we, were, we were talking about it. It was a beach. It. Something fresh, right? 38 Fresh. Fresh. No, 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 no. That was And the, the engineer had long hair, like, like a surfer. Houston. Yes. Well, we talked about it. His name yes. was Houston. So, yeah. Okay. And then James, I think it was James talking about, or was it Fabian? I think Fabian mentioned where we uh, he could hear the beach right next door. It was that we had oh, to stop no, it recording. Oh no, it was James. Where we were talking about like like it was like a long like hustle going and by. Flow? We, we had to stop. <laughs> like, yeah, and you yeah. could literally hear the ocean. It was yeah. right next. But I think it was called a uh, Beach Studios or or something. And Thirty Eight yeah. Fresh was was uh, I always forget because we it was at one so of the many. beaches. It was at the beach. So we did yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. I just don't remember what beach, but yeah crazy huh that is crazy bro i thought and you knew all this stuff man i i do but i couldn't confirm it but none of the yeah. stuff that you're telling me because it makes sense now we're on i mean back then we, we weren't yeah. on on, on uh -uh. group messages no. or nothing that it was just a phone call mm -hmm. that were in person and you would always tell cliff cliff what are me and chulo gonna do a song together what do you mean and i would tell him yeah what are we gonna do a song together and, cliff and just was ve he very hands-on and i get yeah. it he was a man and even to this day you know since we've crossed paths yeah he's always been a man of just just, yeah, he's already got the visual. Stay out of my way. We, yeah. We're gonna do this. This is the way we're gonna do it. And I don't. Which I never I don't blame him because he's a great creator. Yeah. I never. If it wasn't for him, him. Yeah, he wouldn't have yeah. collect, in the beginning, connected us. But yeah. <laughs> in that? the beginning, I hated. It. I was mad. I just hated everything. Oh, but then hey, I learned to. Uh, you know, <laughs> I forgave everybody. I learned not to hold grudges. I forgive everyone, and I love everyone. And so that cool. that segues to this. Yeah. So so fast forward. I saw Reese. Uh, Later on, where, where, I don't know, social media, I saw you somewhere. There was a point in your life where um, I saw you at a few clubs, but we won't get oh, into yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. If you want to get into that, I we can get into man. that. Yeah. Oh, we, we, you went through some time. And I, I, yes. I saw you at some clubs, and you were working at this uh, this specific club. And, oh, you can uh, say it now. I, I used to be ashamed. I, I, he, was at a, he, was at a, he was at a strip club, man, yeah. DJing. And I yeah. saw Chulo in there. And yeah. this was before I, I knew that later on you, you ended up coming to the Lord. Yeah. And um, But uh, when I saw you, and it was a trick, because I hadn't seen you for years, yeah. bro. Yeah. And I was in there, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And uh, uh, That's when you had just started at, 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 the, at the radio station. Yeah, the radio oh, station. Bro, that was right at the end of like Brown Royal Kingpin. Shout out to everybody, man, who yeah. was around that time. I was working with Capone, Shadow. And yeah. so we would take a break from like, you know, the studio and then we'd go over to the strip club. Yeah. Bachelor, why not? So we'd be yeah. up in there tossing dollars, man, kicking with the homegirl, <laughs> Diamonique. Diamonique yeah. was there, right? Yeah, Remember? yeah that's the homie. She, she used to work there yeah. during the day. And yeah. She was a rapper too, as well. And talented. But this dude was up there, and I go, man, that voice sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. And I go, is that Chulo? I was like, dude, yeah. yeah, bro, I'm DJing there. And there's why I didn't even know that you were a DJ, ever DJed in your life, because yeah. I know yeah. you as a rapper. Yeah. And then I think we uh, we kind of exchanged words there for a minute. But then after that, we we hadn't spoken, yeah. I don't think, forever yeah. in a day. And the next thing I know, uh, then you end up you know, starting your walk with Christ. So let's talk about yeah. that. How, well, I got divorced. Oh, man, it was a crazy time. Yeah, uh, you know, I did that as a joke. I went and applied there. I was still with Teardrop. Yeah. We had our, our daughter only. She, she was four years old. And at that time, I was working at Sears. And then I was- Alana? Alana, yeah. Beautiful baby, teardrop. baby girl. Yeah, her baby Teardrop. Baby teardrop. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing, man. So, so uh, I needed a job. And she says, go to Deja Vu. They're hiring DJs. You know how to DJ. Who did? Your daughter? No, Teardrop. Oh, Teardrop. <laughs> I said, wait, are you serious? So you guys always kept a cool relationship then? Even for, not for a while. Uh, well, I'll after the, yeah. We were cool and then we weren't. And then we're cool again. Okay, so, so I went to Deja Vu to apply. Yeah. I needed to make money. And the guy who was running the place at the time, he was my idol as a DJ. Yeah. His name was DJ Spanish Lover. Okay. And I said, what's up, dude? Oh, my God. And, and he said, man, we don't have turntables here. Get out of here. We don't need And then he was he just always a jerk, but he was cool. Like, right. cool, but a jerk. And he said, well, I, get on the mic. Let me hear you. I said, dude, I've never been to a strip club. 
can I listen to the DJ first and see what yeah, I have to me, say? Me, I have never, what's going on here? Then yeah. I can audition. And then, and then I said, this is my first time actually at a strip club. And so I heard the DJ. Then I got on the mic. And then he says, come again next week. And I came back. He said, let me hear you on the mic again. And I said, so he says, all right, you start Monday, day shifts. I said, okay. So I did day shifts for six months trying to make money. And then he said, uh, all right, I'm going to put you on weekends. And back then, that was good money. Okay, yeah, I started, especially weekends. And I'm doing five nights a week. I was making so much money. Under so he had a plan tips. for you. Like, he was yeah. probably grooming you is what he yes, was doing. that's yeah. what he did, yeah. And he mentored me as a, as a DJ. I learned how to announce more. You know, I already knew how to rap yeah. as a DJ, but... But you just needed to learn that verbiage. Yes. And which says, was? Pretend like you're on the radio. <laughs> no cussing. No dead air. <laughs> but pretend you're on a radio show. But be creative. Yeah, yeah. And so I said, this is strip, no cussing? Okay, cool. Cause I, I hated the cuss anyways. Back yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and no dead rate. So I just pretended like I was on a radio station. Come and on, bro. Come give, me, give, me a, give me a little drop, bro. How, how to go in, in the club. I was like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Deja Vu, Ontario. Coming up next, La Sexy Michelada. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, but then you were like, what, what were some of the saying? Dude, I'm telling oh, you, my boy Jay Valentino, shout out to Jay Valentino. Yeah. He worked in the strip club for yeah. so many years. Yeah. I don't know if he still does, yeah. but uh, he's got that voice. He, and he's a yeah. co co comedian now and he does it, uses it in his skits. Yeah. He's like, dude, when I was working at the strip club, it was like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, get your dollar bills ready. These, yeah. these, these women don't work for free, but it was like little saying. <laughs> that's how I started, like trying to change my voice. Yeah, yeah. But then I just used my own voice and that's what made people like me. Cause I, I I was different. You didn't sound like, didn't sound a, like a radio right. announcer yeah. or, or no. a club host. I just used my voice and up. just got everyone hyped up Props. and have fun. Yeah, and that's what got me right away noticed by all the club. And then the, there was seventy deja vu's at that time, wow. and they always got two of us, the I best know. DJs in the whole country. It was uh, Chino and then uh, uh, North Hollywood. No, there was, uh, right. Man, San Francisco, Bro. Stockton. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> Look at Moose. He's clubs. all naming them out. Moose uh -huh. wants to talk right there. Hey. 70 Club. <laughs> hey, bro, truth, yes. truth be told, so if you're from the IE Inland Empire, man, all the strip clubs were like in in Upland, Foothill, yeah. Rialto, all that. Yeah. there was a row yeah. Yeah. of them. I mean, you had yeah. Spearman Rhino, yeah. you had Tropical Lay, you had... Oh, uh, that, was, that was a dirty one. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. That club <laughs> yeah, that was, was like, a dirty yeah, one. <laughs> I, I, I went in there once to check it out. I said, man, this place is crazy. Ooh. So then I went to North Hollywood and that's when I got noticed like by everyone. Like I was like a celebrity for the celebrities. Because they had like, the deja vu out there, right? In North Hollywood. I was there five years every weekend and I'd get basketball players, baseball, movie stars. All the come, celebs. And i kick it with all the celebs. So you were getting tipped out? Oh, dude, yeah. Partying with them. And then it was just cool. Just So you made your money. Yeah. And, and, um, and for every year, deja vu would have a show earlier competition. They get the best two DJs in the country to host it and it was me and my friend named nick shout out to nick from bakersfield we were the two top djs of 70 clubs shout out to nick and in that What's industry up, i was like dang oh yeah you were like um uh, like the bar flares that the, the bartenders that do flaring they yeah. have competitions for everything yeah. and i was i always got asked to host the big big now how, how many years did you do the uh the strip club 13 uh, years i did eight in ontario five wow. in north hollywood oh yeah that long bro yeah i went to school i worked two jobs i coached my daughter's softball team and then my, my son was born oh man i was supposed to be there six months i was there from my the time my daughter started uh uh kindergarten till she got to college so at this point you had you had two kids yeah, Alana five years later, I had uh, Andrew, my son. He's so talented, too. Such a good kid, too. Me and Teardrop were together, and then 15 years later, uh, we got divorced. Okay, so you had two from Teardrop? Yeah. Okay. And I got with this crazy relationship, one a girl that I How, how old's your son? He's 25 now. And then and Lana My daughter is, will be 30, yes. So five years apart. Okay, got you. Yeah. Got your girl and boy. Yeah. And we, okay, so then after... Okay, so you leave the strip club... Uh, See, how did that happen, Transit? What did oh, you, you get well, into after that? When I left uh, Teardrop, I got with the girl that I was that was working there. And I used to be ashamed of saying this, but now I got forgiven. You know, it's crazy. I was with this girl for five years. She was a dancer. I was a DJ. Yep. But it was a crazy relationship. It's a relationship I should have never got into. Right. I already knew it was doomed from the beginning. Sure. So I moved to Vegas for a year in 2008. I went through a crazy depression. I had money. I had two houses. I had cars. I had everything. But I was depressed because I moved to Vegas and my kids were here in, in, in Cali. Mm. And I felt like, man, what am I doing? What am I thinking? And with this so, girl, with you this moved girl. to Vegas. Okay. So then she ended up cheating on me and I moved back depressed because I what I did, because I left, you know, my kids four hours away. Even though I'd see them every weekend, I was just always there around them. I, uh, wherever they moved, I would move. When me and Teardrop got divorced. Yeah. 
I would move whatever city. Because you want to be close to him. Yes, because I, I didn't want no other man raising my kids. Got it. So. Uh, How old were they at this time? When we got divorced, my daughter was 13. My son was five. Okay. Eight. Eight. Okay. So then when I got with this girl, I moved back and I got so depressed where I tried to end my life. I got, went through crazy depression. Mm. And um, I tried to end my life uh, twice. And my friend's wife made me go talk to these pastors. I was, I wanted God. I said, God, I want you. I would go to Catholic church, Christian church, everywhere. All these churches, Filipino Catholic church, well, uh, this kind. And I, yeah. could, I was like, wow, God hates me. I couldn't make it in music. I couldn't make this marriage happen. And I went through a crazy depression, brother. It was crazy. And then finally, these two pastors prayed for me and I felt God. And that's when it was Cinco de Mayo, 2009. I remember the day it was Cinco de Mayo, it was a Tuesday. And I felt like, wow, all this weight came off me. And that's when I found God. And I knew that God was, wow, I knew powerful. he didn't hate me. And I, and I saw that he didn't let me make it when I, we were younger. Cause yeah. I would have ended, I would have been too crazy dude. back then. I loved the party. I love being with all these girls. Right. I would have died or my life would have ended early. Right. And I knew it. And I know he saved me till now. Like he, he, he's, uh, uh, like I feel like I've been preserved. <laughs> I get you for now. I get you. Like, you see it too, huh? You, like uh, with bro, your whole new life right now. Everything you've gone through, yes. bro, are pretty similarly yes. have been there because yes. I've been around all the um, distractions we yes. call them. Yep. Everything that yep. is just, you know, it's fun at the time, bro. But there's something inside you when you go home yes. by yourself and you go yes. into an empty house, bro. You eventually feel that. I mean, maybe not for others. A lot of y'all yeah. just be be single yeah. be a player for the rest of your life yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool but you yeah. know what the fact that yes. you had kids yes that i think to me that sounds like that was your yes. uh void like you weren't there to be there for yes. them and yet you felt like you were over here partying and yeah. doing all this for but, that whole year but yeah. something was calling you to be a father yeah because I, I was raising dope. them i was there raising them even though i did my thing on the side yeah but then when i left for that year i just felt like i left my kids that's them crazy. period wow and then i asked god dude but when i finally found god i wrote a three-page letter to god to god my next wife i want her to be this 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 but change me first i asked him to change me first that's yeah. always what people don't get right you ask for this person or that person but you stay the yeah. same change me first do this i wrote a three-page letter and teach me how to be by myself and not need a girl to feel complete i used to think that i needed girls to feel complete right for a girl right teach me how to love myself right first sure and then bring got to man two years later i see my wife at a bible study and i was like oh my god she's so beautiful but it was an innocent and we've been married 10 years now six months later we got married Awesome, bro. Let me tell you a little Crazy. quick story because I don't want to get it. No, no, no. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is where we relate is uh, when it came to my wife, it, uh, be even before my wife, I went through a similar phase. You know, I, I almost went to go see a counselor yep. and, and my boy told me, you know what? Nah, bro, just come to church with me, bro. Yeah. And yep. he walked me to church, bro, in that day. And this was like around the same time, bro. Like, I've, I've been partying. I, I did every drug on this earth, every girl on this earth, bro. Yep. Like, I, I've been through it all, man. And yep. when, it, when it came down to it, it was like, my body was I was I was I was done I was tired like it was like what's next like what other high I've had every other high what other high is there yeah and I know there's something missing to the point where it was like dude maybe I'm main, meant to be single for the rest of my life okay well if it is then hey man I live it up to you yes. guide me show me where I need to be yes so I would like always you know I go to church I'll be in my bible man and everything else and, and I'd be straight as a as a nail bro and then um one thing my boy told me, because I, I was like, dude, um, I don't know when or where she's at, whatever. Yeah. My boy yeah. told me, you know what, man? Maybe it's because you ain't ready. Yep. Maybe he's not ready to bring you her. Your girl, whoever it is, could be five feet away from you or ten feet, or, or, or five miles, ten miles. It doesn't matter. You think God is going to bring you. He's a, we have a jealous God, he said. And I don't want to get all religious oh, on this yeah. platform, but I'm just telling you the conversation you yes. told me that changed my perspective was he said, he said, we, we have a jealous God. And he says, he's not going to give you one of his until you're cleaned up. Yes. 100%. Amen. He goes, and what really got me, bro, yeah. and I still get chills on this yeah. shit, yeah. is when he said, he goes, you think there's not, you think your girl, the one that he's preserved for you, is not on the other side praying 
for somebody for you to come into her life yeah, yeah. Ooh. he's That's already deep. got a plan but yes. but until you get ready yes. to, then, then he's yes. not going to make that connection yeah it's some along those words bro. yeah you know what i'm saying and, and just like you're sitting here praying yeah she's praying to for you That's to come yep. and y'all don't even know it yep and i was like yeah. damn yeah. bro yeah. Like, that hit me and i was like okay i was like where's she at hold on <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she next door like who yeah. is it but uh it, it's so true bro it's like you got to clean yourself up first in order to, to for that to happen and it, you just got to let it happen it's yes. not your your you time and it's his bro and that's all yes. i'm gonna say on that and, and it eventually yes. worked out and yeah. it finally happened when i stopped looking yeah i stopped looking Back. i was happy being alone she wasn't looking and I just saw her one day and, and man, I had to pursue her. Like I was in junior high and you like yeah. the girl, you send her letters and like, but it right. was so innocent. And we started, So where'd you, where'd you meet your, your wife? At a Bible study. Her okay. mom brought her. I knew her mom and her, actually she had a son right. already, a okay. two-year-old son. Okay. And her mom would bring the two-year-old son to church and Bible. I had just started going to church. Yeah. And, and then one day I'm playing the drums. I, be, I was the drummer at our church. Yeah. And, and uh, I just see this girl, just, she was just beautiful to me, but yeah. I saw her heart. And I didn't look at her lustfully or how I used to look at girls. It yeah. was just all innocent. And then I didn't see her again for a while. And, and then I seen her like months later. And I find out that the little boy was her son. Okay. And so she, now he's, he's four years old. And I grew up. I, I always, hey, little man, play the yeah. drums with me, you know. And, yeah. and, I, and her mom would say, that's my grandson. And then we, we started dating. She wouldn't go on a date with me alone. Half the church had to come or right. her friend right. or this or right. that. Cause right. she, she wouldn't even give me her phone number. Good. And in my head, I was like, dang, do you know who I am? You know how we like as guys, like, yeah. And so I'm like, dang, she won't even give me her number. Finally, we started dating. And then six months later we, we were married and I've been raising, he's my son. I don't say you date, you, you married her after six months. Yes. Whoa, oh. that's the you know why, bro? Because I'm gonna tell you, yes. I say this all the time. I said, man, especially when, you know, when we get up there in age, bro, we already know what we want. We already yes. been through the bullshit. We've already, <laughs> we've already seen yep. what's out there, yep. and it's really what's not out there. Yeah. At the end of the day, and, and when you know, you know. Yeah. You already know what you yes. you already went through this this type of girl, this type of girl, yes. this type of girl, whatever. Yes. That's why I always tell my wife. I say, you know, maybe I might have been a little, you know, freaky dick back in the day, <laughs> but it took me to go through them to get. <laughs> <laughs> as funny. bad as it sounds bro yeah, that's yeah, a real yeah, deal yeah. What? it is and, bro and this is the first time in any relationship i'm completely honest yeah. with with her i don't cheat i don't even think of cheating on her it's crazy i i she's like babe sometimes you're a little too honest or i tell her the past or i had stories and and it's just crazy because because i call her my rib now i say my rib yeah because i i've been with girls where i've been in front yeah. or i let them come in front and i'm like nope you're right by my side you're there my you rib, like i'm su supposed to be props to you man and and you know you get in arguments all that stuff every, every marriage but sure but i know i'm not going to divorce her she's not going to divorce no. i just feel like this is it and every the three-page letter that i wrote to god yeah it's her that's god dope. gave me that three see how that works so on my audiobook album that i'm working on right now hey 13 chapters it ends with her song which is called my, my uh, um, that's my lady I wrote a lyric, that's my lady, and it came to pass. I was like a prophecy for myself. That's what's up. Crazy. How, how long you guys been married now? 10 years. We got married leap year. Leap year, uh, February 29th. Okay. So okay. technically it's been four years, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it feels like 10. And you have two, two children? Together, we have, no, uh, man, whoo. Uh, together we have three babies. We have Ezekiel, who's He'll be five next week. Joshua is uh, three. He'll be four. And then my baby, uh, Mariah. So I totally, total, I have six kids. My two. From the first marriage. And then my, I don't say step, but my son. Sure, her, And then sure. the three. With her, we have three. Bro, amen back to, to back that, to back. brother. Heck yeah. So I'm a bull, baby. I'm a bull. <laughs> That's all That's love. what I tell her family all the time. They're like. <laughs> no, bro, I, I, I commend you on all of that, bro. Because I, I know we, we I, again, we've lived the similar lifestyle. Yeah. It's crazy how you're sharing this with me because, and I'm sure a lot of that, our viewers can relate to that as well. If you've been into that, so comment down below if you've been a similar situation. Yes. And, you know, getting into the being a stepfather and all that is another conversation yeah. as well too yes. but uh you know that that's that's where i'm at but yes. you know what man it, it is you take them in as your own yes you know because my dad did that to me he was the only dad i knew and you know what's crazy you know when i saw you again like 10 years later after the club you were at my, right before my college graduation you you went with the station and you guys did uh you know the the outside where you set up a remote yeah the remote 
And you're like, and my daughter sang at my college graduation. She sang God Bless America. And you said, hey, that's baby teardrop. <laughs> and I hadn't seen you in 10 years. <laughs> where, where was that? At, at Platt College in okay. Ontario. Oh, yeah. We used to always be at yeah, Platt College, Platt man. College in Ontario. And you okay, saw don't, right don't, before Don't my say their names too much. They oh, ain't gave us no check no, for this. they ain't give me no. <laughs> Yeah, it's no, my shout bad. out to Platt I know, College. I forgot, I, I forgot about that. It's no. been so long since I did my podcast, I forgot about that. But that's when you saw her again as an adult. She was actually, it was her senior year of high school, in high school. I want to yeah. fast forward really quick, bro, yeah. um, to, so you got this desire, it sounds like, to, uh, well, let me, I want to go in sequence here. Okay. You had a podcast called random comedy radio yes okay you were you're doing something like this was this 2020 or was this 2021 no when i when i quit the club when i met my wife uh back in 2011 i yeah. quit the club i said my wife wanted she didn't know it was a strip club my wife now okay we're gonna, me and my friends are gonna go to your club she yeah. thought it was a nightclub I said, no, you're not. You're not coming here. <laughs> That's the only person Money I ever Moons said. Money moves by here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only person I ever told, don't come here. Money moves by oh, here. Hanging out yeah. with Mr. Seaman, baby. And the following week, I quit on the spot. I just quit. I said, no, I want, to be, I want this to be different. I quit. And I said, God, I want to do comedy. I want to host a comedy show. That's right. I remember. Three, like, it was like three years later. A guy calls me. Hey, I got your number from so and so, so and so. You're Chulo, huh? You're on Brown and Proud. You're with Lighter Shade of Brown, right? I was like, Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm having a comedy show. Would you like to host it? I said, What? Would you like to host my comedy show? Out of the blue. Out of the blue. I was like, Wow. Yes, I would like to host your comedy show. These comedians were so. so two. One comedian was really against it because he was a host. He was hating on me. Yeah, yeah. This guy, he's a rapper. He's not a comedian. This and that. Uh, and he just. I hosted my first comedy show. There was four hundred people there. Three hundred of the people were my friends and family. Okay. Which was all. From, and it was just awesome. I, you know, I'm I'm trying to host, and the, the guy who was hating on me says, "Hey, that was pretty good." You're pretty funny. Really? I had no experience in comedy. You got the code signed the first day yeah. on the guy that was hating on And then I started doing shows with this guy, but it was all my people coming. So my wife and friends were like, why don't you do your own shows? It's all your people that are coming. Yeah. I was making like 80 bucks a show, yeah. but this guy's making thousands. I said, so I had to talk with him. I said, hey, brother, I'm going to start doing my own shows, but I'll stay away from your area. Yeah. I'll just do them over here. Yeah. Okay, brother, no problem. Oh, he hated He He got bad. But I said, but... It, I don't know why you got mad, but then I started, I came up with the name Random Comedy and I started producing, uh, promoting and doing my own shows. I, I remember flyers. I saw a couple of flyers. Yes. They were like black flyers. Like yeah. oh, well, the one I, I had seen. Yeah. I think you, did you do one in San Bernardino or I something? I did San Bernardino. I was everywhere. Rancho, uh, Fontana, at Deja Vu. I did I did them at churches, schools, clubs, restaurants, everywhere. My boy went from the church to the strip club man, <laughs> and back to church with the club. And, and the thing about my comedy, God, see me my way. Are right? we going this way? Let's go. <laughs> and the thing about my shows where I would get comedians that didn't cuss. I would do clean comedy. Okay. And people would be like, dude, you're funny. You didn't even cuss once. And I'm like, you don't need a cuss to be funny. You know, and I, but I was going mainstream, but without cussing. Right. And I would do shows every three months for three years. I did it full time for a living. Then the pandemic hit. So then yes. th is that when random, your podcast started? My podcast started to promote my own shows. Yeah. That was in 2015. Nope. No, 2000, yeah, 15. No, 16. I think I saw, uh, well, there was, and maybe I saw something else because it was your wife and you I were on one live. of them. Oh, that's when I started posting them on the internet. But oh, so those were older ones. Yeah, no, I started 2016 live and then they would go off the internet. I wouldn't save them. Oh, okay. So you, that's probably why you couldn't find some of the original shows. Yeah, bro, look at you. You was ahead of your time, bro. <laughs> 2016, I was doing podcasts. You've always been ahead of your time, bro. What's wrong? What's Isn't up? that crazy? And music. What's up, huh? That's crazy, dog. Yeah. It's crazy history, huh? All right, bro. So, is there anything else, man, that we we didn't, you know, we leave it on the table here, or no? We haven't have talked anything? about. Uh, well, I'm gonna talk about my new. Oh album. no, 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 no. Yeah, but yeah. Push the really quick. I want to touch upon the press on joint you had oh, in yes. 2020. I know you, you you did a song during the pandemic. Talk about it's featuring half ounce. Yes. Well, you know, I was done with music. I just thought, all right, I'm done. I, I don't want to do music no more. And my heart got broken too many times. I didn't let my kids do music professionally. I didn't let them pursue it because of what what I went through. Yeah. And so when the pandemic hit, right when it hit, I had a vision. Man, this is what's going on. It was like a vision, a crazy vision. 
And I said, I got to do a song about this. Right. I went in my room. I produced a track in like a matter of hours. I wrote a whole five verses in one day. Quick. Mm -hmm. And I was telling you the other day that I, I used to struggle getting that third verse, you know, writing a song. Right, right. We all were there. Yes, yep. but I wrote five verses. That's why I was, it, it, it helped to have an extra partner with yes, me. Yes, yes. All right, <laughs> you got that up verse, there, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I wrote five verses. I said, I got to record this. And then my wife said, remember one time we were at uh, TBN. We went to TBN. And there was a rapper they were, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, interviewing. And he said he had never heard God's audible voice. And I heard a voice tell me, do your music and I'll take care of you. And she said, remember that? It was like eight years ago. I was like, babe, why don't you just do your music again? Write your, because I, I wanted to write a movie about my life. Right. She says, why are you going to write a movie? Movies sometimes don't get made. Write a book. She told me that. And I, right. she says, then it could turn. I said, oh. And then it just all hit me. Yeah. So I did this song. I said, I'm going to do a whole video, a whole publish it, everything, and, and become a, start a publishing company to show people I'm relevant again about right. the vision of the song. And then at the end of the video, it's my dad. He survived COVID in Boston, one of eight people that survived. And, and so Ooh. I released this on his birthday. So I was like, man, I could still rap. And I just felt like Megamind. Like yeah. <laughs> my brain just felt sure, like- Sure, bro, you always got it in you, never yeah. leaves. I could rap better now than I did when I was 18. I got more history. So I had the vision to do an audio book album about my life. It's called My Life, chapters 1 through 13. Verse 1, it's actually a chapter in the book, and then uh, the song comes on. So I read you the chapter, and then the song. That's dope. Then chapter 2. And three of the songs on there I recorded years ago. Yeah. One of the songs I did with Teardrop back in 92. No way. And I, I left it as it is, and I'm releasing it. Bro, bro. Me and Teardrop, <laughs> this song about 92. Blow. I can't wait to hear that. Yes. Uh, 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 three of the other songs I re-recorded and redid. I re I remixed, redid, re-recorded, and and so there's 13 chapters. It, it goes from the inspiration, how I was inspired by my my mom to to do to sing, you know, do music, and my grandma, my dad, mm -hmm. and then chapter two. My friend was murdered at 16. I wrote a song for him back in like 93, 94. Yeah. Well, I re-recorded it. Chapter three is when I got my first heartbroken tear. I wrote a song for teardrop. And then I then in chapter four, my political, I wrote a prophecy in 94 about uh, uh, they were going to build a wall. Right. And it happened. Yep. So I left that song as it is it's called I Won't Tolerate It. And I left it as it is. I just redid the music. And then it goes, I'm a daddy now. I wrote, I'm writing this. I have two songs to go. That's written from my older kids. I became a young dad. And it's yeah. called I'm a daddy now. Yeah. And I, I'm almost done with it. Just telling them. That I cherish every moment I had with them and sorry for the times I wasn't there, but I cherish the times I was there, you know, right, just right, being a young right, dad. Right. And then it goes to uh, uh, a song I wrote for another. So it ends with the prophecy I wrote to myself about meeting my wife. That's my lady. So she, she, I said, babe, are you okay with me putting these two love songs that I wrote? For? She said, that was your life. Of course right, you have to put right. them That was there. before her. I was yeah, like, yeah. dang, it touched yeah. my heart. Cause any other, you know, most girls would be like, no, you're not putting those songs. Nah, there. You married the right one. Man. Yes. And she yeah. said, but my song better be good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm stuck. Chapter 13 better yeah. be better than chapter two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at now. I have, I'm finishing up the one I wrote for my, my, my older babies and then her song. That's dope, bro. I think that's yeah. a dope ass concept. So you, got a, you got a book with a song. Yes. Audio book. I can't wait for it. What's it, what's it called? My Life, chapters one through 13. You could buy the audio book, the book, or just the album with the music. When, 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 when are you going to finish that up? Oh, man. I want to release it by February next year. Let us know, bro, when yes. it drops, and then we'll have you back on the yes. show, man. And then we'll go ahead and just push that out. And, and yes. I can't wait to... I can't yes. wait to hear that song with Teardrop, bro. Just because yes. that's the only... Which she right? rapped on a couple of the songs yes. later on on yes. her albums. But, bro, she's a, yes. she's a, uh, she's yes. a, she's a legend, bro. And, and she yes. doesn't even know it. You no. know what I'm saying? No. And, I try to get her to, to do stuff again and to come out and... <laughs> She's like, that was your dream. She always tells me. Well, bro, you're, you're, you're yeah. legendary as well, bro, because oh, you yeah. lived the time with us, man. Yes. So one thing I want to end this on is a positive note, as always. I know we, we haven't spoken in years, bro, and I'm glad that, that you came to my platform yes. to talk about, to clear up some things, because yeah. there were some things that I didn't know about, but I'm glad yeah. you cleared those up. But uh, the fact that you're still yeah. rocking with us, man, you're rocking yes. in the new age. Mm -hmm. And continue success with you and your family, bro, your wife, your, your kids, and Say yeah. hello from Uncle O, bro. Yes. And, and good luck with your audio book, man. Thank you for, remember about four, three, four years ago when you called me up on stage? Yep. Castle Park. Yes. Yep. Thank you for that, brother. When you did that, it just like so much weight came off me. 
And I just felt like, wow, I was meant, I wasn't going to go to that, but I said, God wants me here for a reason. Yeah. And then it just felt like, like a big relief. Yeah. So thank you, brother. You don't even realize uh, how big that was for me. You're welcome, bro. And, and yeah. I think now is, is better enough time. Like Moons goes on the road with me now, bro. Yeah. He tours. I would love for you. And sometimes I, I forget because it's, you know, you just yeah. boom, boom. It's the same thing. But local shows, bro, yeah. I'd love for you to come out. Oh, dude, I and maybe we could to, do, yes. Brian, we add Brian and Proud to the, uh, to the, you know, Shoot. to the show, yeah, bro. The we got a couple coming up too. Cool. Here locally. So oh, I'll definitely brother, hit I'd you. Love to be a part of that, man. Okay. Yo, man, it's a pleasure having Beth the one, bro, aka Chulo, the notorious <laughs> Chulo. But now he's the what the original Chulo. The original Chulo. Now, where can they find you, brother, on social? Oh man, yeah, I'm on uh, in, uh, MySpace. No, I'm just okay, saying. Okay, okay, come on. <laughs> Chulo Beto 11 on Instagram. Uh, Beto Vergara on Facebook. What else? I'm TikTok. I don't even know what I am on TikTok. I okay. just started that one. But well, get us that, Give me bro. on Instagram. Chulo Beto 11. And um, thank you. Oh, thank you, no, man. You're welcome, brother. Man. We'll leave that in the description as well. Yes. And uh, in case you missed that. But thank you, you for too. being part of the legacy once again. And, uh, you know, we made history together, bro. That's all I got to say. You were part of the man. dream team from the start, Brown thank and you. Proud. And if I didn't say it before, I'm going to say it now. All right. Oh, thank you, brother. All thank right, you, brother, y'all, man. That's it. So we conclude this, the Blockout Podcast. We get more and more into the birth of Lighter Shade of Brown. Please share this video if you get a chance. Um, tag somebody, you know, give it a big like. And, and more importantly, we're just trying to spread that spread that love, man. Shout out to Money Moons, dude. Our producer yeah, yeah. back there hitting the switches. Hitting Money the mic. Moons. What up, Moons? You good? <laughs> what up? Money we good. Moons. We good. <laughs> About this tour life. Tour life. Tour life. <laughs> Crazy hearing the stories, man. Oh, man. They're just going to get better man. and better, bro. So man. with that being said, we got to catch you guys next week with a brand new vlog, a brand new show, brand new podcast, man. We love you. Be safe. Thank you, brother. Man, you got to go to work. Bro. That was dope, bro. You, brother. Oh, oh, wait.